Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to discuss with you the solution to the eclipse problem. The question was what is the size of the penumbra during a solar eclipse, the size of the penumbra of the moon on the earth. What is the diameter? This is the second time that I'm taping this. <laughs> you will soon find out why I had to redo this. Let's first look at the problem again. You will see here a picture that I've shown you earlier. The orbit of the Earth around the Sun is elliptical. This is the maximum distance to the Sun, this is the minimum distance to the Sun. Since this is the radius of the Sun, you can immediately calculate the angle alpha, which is the angular size, if we look at the Sun from Earth. And you find then this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value. The maximum value will be when the Sun is the closest to us. The minimum value will be when the Sun is the farthest from us. The Moon has an elliptical orbit around Earth. So there is a maximum and there is a minimum distance. If you put the Moon at the maximum distance, its angular size is always smaller than the Sun. So total solar eclipses are then never possible. But if the Moon is closest to Earth, its angular size is always larger than the Sun. It's larger than these two numbers. So in principle, then total solar eclipses are possible. So the question now is, what is the size of the penumbra on Earth during a solar eclipse. Okay, look at this picture. Here is the Sun, here is the Moon, and here is the Earth. Right at the center of this line here on Earth is the total solar eclipse. On August 21, that was a area with a diameter of about 100 kilometers. It's extremely small. A much larger area on Earth has partial solar eclipses. Convince yourself, if you're here and you look at the Sun, that you see the Sun without any part of the Moon in front of it. And the same is true here. But anywhere here, you will see a partial solar eclipse, except then for this very center. And the question then is, how large is this? What is the diameter of that circle? I have chosen for my calculations that the sun is as far away as it can be. This is a given. I have chosen that the moon is as close as it can be. That's why you see a red line here and a red line here. Given is the radius of the Sun and the radius of the Moon. So only these four numbers are known. All the rest you have to calculate. Okay. If you are standing here and you look at the Moon, you will see the Moon at exactly the same angular size as when you look at the Sun. So this angle alpha here is the same as this angle alpha. If I call this distance d1 from the Moon to that point and this d2 from the Sun to that point then it's obvious that the tangent of this angle one half alpha the tangent of that one half alpha is the radius of the Sun divided by this distance d2 radius of the Sun divided by d2 and the tangent of this half alpha here is radius of the moon divided by d1. Radius of the moon divided by d1. One equation with two unknowns. However, you also know the distance from the moon to the sun. That is the 152 million kilometers 
minus this distance from Earth to the Moon. And so that gives you then the distance from the Sun to the Moon. This is that distance. So you know that d1 plus d2 is 151.6 million kilometers. Now you have two equations with two unknowns, so you can solve for d1, for d2, and you can solve for alpha. And you find immediately that d1 is 377,000 kilometers, and that the angle alpha is 0 0.528 degrees. Now, look at this number, which is the size at which we see the sun looking from Earth. And this is the size at which we see the sun looking from this point. These two are so close together that we should have been able to predict that. And when you give it a little bit of thought, it's obvious that they have to be very closely the same. Because the distance from the moon to the sun is 400 times larger than the radius of the moon. So that means that this distance here must be roughly 400 times larger than this distance there. So this distance is so small that, very roughly speaking, you will approximately find the same angle here as you find there. Because look, the total distance from Earth is 150 million kilometers. Well, this is so small and this is so small that it's almost, you can almost forget about it. So had you appreciated that from the beginning, you didn't have to go through the two equations with two unknowns, you could have simply picked this value for this angle alpha. If you had done that, you would immediately have been able to calculate that this is 377,000 kilometers. All right, so with a little bit of wisdom, you could have avoided this step here. And you would have come up with the same number, because the tangent of half this angle and the tangent of half that angle are to a high degree of accuracy the same. Okay, so now we know this angle, uh, this distance. So we're now almost done. Because in this triangle, h divided by this distance is the tangent of one half alpha. So h divided by this distance is the tangent of one half alpha, which is the same, of course, as the radius of the moon divided by this distance. That's what I have here. I could have chosen, I could have written down the tangent of half this angle, but I chose to do it this way. Okay. Now comes an embarrassing moment for me. Why am I retaping this? Okay, I'll be very honest with you. This was my result. H was 3577 kilometers, and therefore 2H was 7154 kilometers. I had no reasons to doubt that. I checked my calculations up to this point several times and I found the same thing. Listen to what I said. I checked my calculations up to this point several times. The first three days I got only 10 answers. Seven were obviously totally wrong, but three of them said that the diameter is 6,750 kilometers. I thought it was strange. Why would three people have that same number? 
Well, I still wrote them. You close because I had 7150, but it's not quite right. Then, when I posted the video, I need your answers. There were more people who had 6,750. So I went back to my original calculations in my notebook. And the original calculations in my notebook, I always use that notebook when I write these things up. My notebook showed 3370. Three, this was all the same. 3377. 3377. Three, I made a small mistake called a slip of the pen. On here I wrote 3577. Whereas in my notebook it said 3377. Three, three, so clearly this is wrong. And this is wrong. So I apologize to all of you to whom I sent the message that the 6750 is wrong. I sent that to quite a few people. I apologize for that. And that's why I have to retape it. I only have to change this part, by the way, because all this is, of course, correct. So, yes. The diameter is roughly 67.50, whatever, 67.40. All these answers, of course, are correct. It is the diameter, because the penumbra on Earth is, of course, a circular area. So it is in this direction, 67.50, in this direction, and in this direction. So that is the correct answer. Yeah. I'll now tell you how you could have made what a physicist calls a back on the envelope calculation. It's a crude thing, it's not very accurate, but you get the rough idea, right? The total eclipse on August 21 lasted about two and a half minutes, that is 150 seconds. And the diameter of that region was 100 kilometers. So in two and a half minutes, the totality moved by 100 kilometers. The partial eclipse most places, certainly where I live, lasted about two and a half hours, which is 150 minutes. So the totality lasted 150 seconds. The partial eclipse lasted 150 minutes. So the partial eclipse lasted 60 times longer. If I multiply the two and a half the 100 kilometers, which is the diameter of the totality, with 60, I get 6,000 kilometers. Not bad. 6,750. So, isn't that wonderful that this is just a stroke of the pen, by comparing the known numbers, you get a number which is approximately correct. All right. I asked more questions. I asked also how many total solar eclipses will there be between now and 2030? There are going to be eight total solar eclipses. And I also asked you which one is within which lane of totalities, because it's a lane, right? The totality moves along the lane. So which of those eight are you living within thousand kilometers of the lane? For me, that is April 8, 2024. My partial eclipse was about 
75% and it will again be roughly 75% on April 8, 2024. However, I will then be 88 years old. So I would say there is probably a 50% chance that I will not be alive anymore. But in case I am alive, my wife and I may decide to move, travel to the lane of totality. The city close to us would be Montreal, but the weather in April in Montreal is appalling. 18 days in April it normally rains. So certainly we will not go to Montreal. We have to go further south. Okay, so much for the solution of the eclipse. On September 2, I will post a relatively simple physics math problem. On September, and I will not post any answers. I told you that earlier. The reason is that if I only post the wrong answers and not the correct answers, you will immediately figure out what the correct answers are. So I will not post any answers of the September 2 problem. On September 9, I will post the solutions to that first post-vacation problem. And on September 16, I will then post our first special relativity problem. All right, so I'm looking forward to your solutions of the September 2. And don't be disappointed if I don't post yours. If I don't post yours, it doesn't mean at all that it was correct. I have decided I will post none. However, I will read all of them. So please do send your solutions to me. I will read all of them because we are still friends. Have a nice day and take care.